Now, That's for a reason. This is, a reason. this is history right here. Y'all the I'm first people you. to come on the black market with a follow-up. Okay. Yeah. See? Yeah. Okay. okay, I'll take that. Yeah. You the first motherfucker to have to double back. Yeah. And do part two. And, yeah. and what we means said that though. What means more for me is because of my align aligning with Jeff, Chad, and what I'm bringing to the table for them. Yeah. And I think it's just part of what how... What you mean, them? Like, I ain't with them. I'm saying, man, the brand. But I'm, I'm dealing with them. But I mean, for the, for the whole thing. Everybody in this room is the brand. Let's wait for the cameras, man. <laughs> the cameras is ready. I can talk that talk, man. I know I'm you just talk. Letting you I know, bro. I just talk talk wanted, when I saw you come in there, I lit up, because I was looking at all the... All the everybody got the new merch. They sneaking in and doing the little sneak fashion show. Yeah. From the old school to the new school. Yeah. Got, yeah. You since you left, we got new color. We got about 12 new colorways. <laughs> <laughs> Doing numbers on this road, man. It's supposed to be, man. It's a brand. It's a big brand here, man. And then show them your shit, Clay. Oh, yeah, this is this me. Just quick English majors. You know, that's what we call my people. Yeah, keeping it all yeah. in the house, man. We're trying to make some strides hey. in this industry. No, Y'all not about to get all this fashion money by yourself. <laughs> Hey, it's enough money for everybody, man. Enough for everybody. Nah, yeah. it's enough for everybody. Enough for everybody. It, yeah. yeah. It's enough for everybody. But what he gonna talk about is what my generation didn't do. Nobody collaborated. Oh. Everybody mm. kept the shit I'm like, like, like the ancient it. Chinese secret. And I'm yeah. like, nigga, you tell, if I tell you, you tell you, we all winning. Yeah, y'all supposed we, to get together. I came in this game and we didn't exist. Yeah. I was going to trade shows with suits on trying to fit in their world. And now I look the where Steve it is. Steve Harvey suit, they was big. The, yeah. A lot of yeah. not that. A lot of money. Nah, but you know what I'm saying? It's like, I went, I went, yeah. I'm the only black dude walking the floor, and white dudes <clears> looking at me saying, yo, what team you play for? And I'm like, I'm not here to endorse somebody. I got to, and I'm explaining myself about just ownership in a brand and all in a, in a store, yeah. and they didn't believe it. And so I'm like, hey, did you talk to this guy really like suit? that? It's really, yeah. <laughs> like, they're looking come at away. you like, you got to be. You got to be endorsing. You're, right. you're an athlete. You're not here doing business. And it was just like. Nike, starter, Converse, champion, you knocking on, you know, I want to open up an account. And they be like, what, do you have a store? I'm like, yeah, I got a store. What the hell you think I'm doing this trade show for? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, man. Yeah, well, you know, we don't officially start this thing until I ring this bell and let everybody know the black market is going. Black now market. it's official. Yeah. Now everything you say. Is on record. There you go. Yeah, we have officially started. Welcome back to the black market. I got my dog Clayton English in here with yeah. me today discussing growth, development, opportunities, expansion, uh, partnerships, collaborations, taxes, uh, sales tax, suggested retail price, uh, units per mile, um, <laughs> the distance between light and sound. We really <laughs> go in today. You didn't know that I knew that I know. Welcome back. Well, welcome Appreciate here, it. first of all. I hope y'all are enjoying our new location and, and things of that nature. Yeah. And I, I know y'all got some game for me. Absolutely. Don't make me go that. to the notes, man. Look right at the camera, introduce yourself, and let them know what you do and how you do it. My name is Gerard Murray. I am the second leg of a three-headed monster, a third-generation family business. Uh, I've been in the game for about 40 years. Started in the fashion business at the age of 15. And this is my son. Yeah, uh, Tahir Murray, AKA Mr. Legacy, um, recent graduate of Howard University, class of 2021. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I'm the CEO of Legacy History Pride, and uh, we design, develop apparel that embody HBCU excellence. Um, a portion of our proceeds go directly back to the schools that we partner with. And we're gonna talk about collaborations today, partnerships that we've done to just continue to amplify black excellence in our community. So. Yeah, appreciate you guys having us again. Yeah. No problem. Yeah, yeah, man. Appreciate you, man. Yeah. You brought the big dog with you today. So we're going we gonna to actually get into the legacy and figure out why they call you Mr. Legacy. Cool. So we're going to get with your pops, and then we're going to get the first leg, and then we're going to get the second leg. So you just chill, because you you last. You got to keep oh. the whole shit going. <laughs> sure he go. might drop something you don't know yet. Pops, Both you got to take over from here. You said this is 
three generations. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this dates back to think about uh, my father, Vaughn Murray. He left Trinidad 1966. Okay. My sister was just born. He left her in Trinidad, took my mother, and they came to the United States thinking the roads were paved with gold. And just chasing that American dream that a lot of immigrants do. He landed here, and just recently I was told this story of they landed in JFK, no one picked them up, and they took a car to my aunt's house. The dream starts at President Street in Brooklyn. He came here looking for work. He was a decorated police officer in Trinidad, but he came in with the aspiration of doing and chasing the American, American dream. He got a job with United Nations, went over to Jerusalem, worked over there, but over there he learned to speak Yiddish, he learned the culture, and this is a dark-skinned Trinidadian man. And when he came back, when he was told, when you come back to America, own your own business and own your own house. So when he came back, he just followed that. So he relocated Queens, bought a house, bought a commercial property that had apartments upstairs where we lived, and he started a shoe repair business. He self-taught himself how to make <clears throat> custom shoes, men and women's. Mm. And from there, he just started building his business. You know, 1967, I'm born, I come into the world, fast forward, hip hop starts to come on the scene. I'm coming home from school and, you know, strict parents, you either gonna play sports or you coming home. Spending time in the store and just watching him just interact with the community, help people, build things, you know, just, just watching business, but not knowing the story as a young, as a, as, a, as a little one, but as I got older, started to hit him with, yeah, we need this and we need that. And he was just like, you go out and you find it. If you, if you think we need sneakers, go do that. So we started, um, you know, started wholesaling simple things, socks, T-shirts. And then eventually I told him we need sneakers and found somebody who would wholesale the sneakers. And we were doing that. But just to give you the picture, think about it now. Back then, you didn't see any black owned businesses yeah. selling sneakers. <laughs> it's usually Jewish or Korean or Asian owned, I should say. And with that said, it was hard knocking on doors and having people really take you serious, you know? I mean, I, I used to go to trade shows and, you know, when I first started going to trade shows, I just saw everybody in suit and ties and that was the thing. And I started to go there, suit and ties, but they thought I wasn't a business owner, they thought I was an athlete. They're walking endorsing somebody. So I'm talking about, this is the late 80s. And I'm going to the super show where they used to have it here in Atlanta and it was a licensing show with everything from Nike to Champion to Puma, everything. And I was just trying to, you know, get them to say, can you sell directly to us? Getting a lot of no's, getting some yes from small companies, but just, you know, I'm making my, making my trail. But it came to one day uh, we were dealing with the starter and the salesman at the time, they basically was coming and asking my opinion of this and that. And I'm giving my opinion. Oh, you should change this, you should change that. And my father said to me one day, he said, you know, they just picking your brain because they're six months later, they're coming back with what you just told them to do and they're selling it and you're not getting anything from it. Yeah. All right, that started a, me just looking at things a little differently. And I came up with the concept and the idea of School of Hard Knocks. And that turned into a brand that we sold globally. We sold in Japan, we sold in Europe, we sold all over the United States. And Yeah, I bought a bunch of that shit. Yeah, we, we, we did that. So, but before that, just to back up a little, in 1991, we had the opportunity of, you know, my, my, um, my grandmother passed away, we went to Trinidad and, you know, coming back on the flight, I'm with my girlfriend, who today is my wife, and I'm telling her my frustration, and she was slick with the pen, and she wrote a letter to Nike, and it was basically, how can we share a modest piece of the American pie as a black-owned business? I used to throw parties. So back in the day, people had actual guest lists where you wrote, your name, number, and your address. So I took the guest list I had attached to the letter, sent it in Nike, and about, a, say, two weeks later, got a, you know, somebody came in the store and was like, hey, we, from Nike, we've been trying to open you guys for years. It was talk, but at the end of the day, I was like, Sounded you know, good. Yeah, it sounded good, I'll right, take it. They started right, us right. with a $10,000 credit line, and we took those lemons they gave us and turned it into one of the top tier Nike accounts. So we were like a, at the time, they, Nike calls it different, we were a tier one. So we were like the, <clears throat> the main, main account. So when you seen lines wrapping around, waiting for the latest Jordan drops, that was what we was doing. But with that said, we established ourselves as a Nike account, first black owned distributor. I started School of Hard Knocks. So think about it now where people, you know, you matching things with sneakers. I had the lead to know what was coming out. Right. And you used to bring the colors with yeah. Hard Knocks. So we kind of like, I don't like to toot my horn or anything, but we kind of like was the first flagship store. At the time when we did it, the only other flagship stores was around was Spike Lee, with Spike's joint. Yeah. Naughty by Nature, 
Wu Wei in Staten Island. They had one in A2. Yeah. yeah. And from there, it was the Hard Knock store. And that was the beginning. So we talk about what inspired and what started. I'm coming from the era where Carl Jones and TJ Walker, and they may say, who's that? That was Cross Colors. After Cross Colors, so think about it, it was always one at a time. Cross Colors, then he came with Carl Kana. Carl Kana, then you had the April Walkers, the uh, Maurice Malone's, and then oh. you came and it got big, it, it turned into the FUBU. Then it turned to the Mecca, the academic. So we were all part of, I say we were all part of a, a pioneer in the, the urban market. And it was like monopoly money, because we were doing numbers. We were doing serious numbers. But in that, I, I say, didn't know where I was going to be standing today, but I just knew I never wanted to become something I despise. People who didn't give out information or people who kind of looked down on the community <laughs> they were selling to. So therefore, we always, as Hard Knocks and Vaughn's was the store my father started, we always had a connection to the community. So my father was very this. respected in the community. Like black people, all shades of black people, are, you know, just known for being colorful and fashionable. Yeah. Why is it so hard to get into the fashion market as a black, as a black person? Uh, I mean, I think that it goes across for all industries, you know? I mean, w what you guys are doing here, you, you, it's groundbreaking. From what you're doing from the place we're in, the format, the studios, the tour and all that, when you hear somebody say that's never been done before, but you guys are doing it, and you're doing it as easy as you wake up every day, you know you are trailblazing, but you're inspiring somebody who's probably eight year, eight, in eighth grade right now, in high school, whatever. There's somebody coming for the crowd, but you guys, what you guys are carrying, and I take my hats off, but. This is something, but now somebody else has a story who's in the, you know, whatever field it is, construction. There's the, uh, you know, the first black construction company in, in Atlanta, and they talk about how they were important of putting together Jackson Hartsfield Airport. You know, those, those stories, they're, they're here. We're, we're, I think we as a culture, we still, and it's kind of crazy, we're still talking about the first, you know? Supreme Court, the first, you know? It, it's always the first, but you gotta take that and just run with it. Right. You have to know I'm gonna, not say too much a crown, I'm gonna take that responsibility and know that when I step in that room, they're looking at me different. They're waiting for me to mess up, but I'm not gonna mess up. And well, then I, I represent have, I'm the gonna culture. give them exactly what they want. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna show my ass. And then they underestimate us. <laughs> yeah. They underestimate the That's culture. That's why we always deliver, because yeah. they expect so, yeah. so much less. Yeah. You gotta under deliver and over prime. You know there you go. That's, that's Over deliver and under prime. Yeah. That's the way. That's it, that's it. So you got all this game. Coming in. A lot of it. I'm still soaking it in. Well, so even sitting here listening to him speak, it's just like um, constant reminders of like the why and the purpose and the vision of like what I'm doing now. Yeah. So, I mean, part of the story that he didn't talk about yet is um, his introduction into the collegiate business. And that's when we moved down here in Atlanta. And he was in the collegiate arena. Uh, you could talk a little bit about it too, if you want, but. I mean, just, I tr so I, was, I, I really appreciated the collegiate arena because I, I said, tell me another industry where you acquire brand new customers every year. Right. Through, I know, the funeral, <laughs> the yeah. funeral and the baby industry. Yeah. But in the collegiate industry, you get brand new customers every year, and it's based on the enrollment of the school, but yeah. you're always gonna acquire that, and through graduation, you get new alumni, but you have a loyal customer base. Right. But on top of that, in dealing with starter and champion, nobody ever did anything for the HBCUs. There was one company, AACA, I seen what they did in the 80s and it just took the world by storm. Yeah. And I said, it took our culture by storm, but then to me it never really went as far as I thought it could go, you know? And that was started by a guy named Mark Van Grack and then there's another guy doing it right now and I, I take my hat off. I, I don't, I give it up to whoever puts it out there, but we were inspired. I was inspired by it. I, started, I wonder what made black people start buying all this college shit from schools we didn't even go to. Somebody like you wearing it, you know? Yeah. Somebody the like you wearing it. People in yeah. yeah. People yeah. Yeah. It was just like, just some random man shit. Think about though. it, Bill Cosby. Well, when they Bill started Cosby making them the, uh, with the little patch on yeah. it and yeah. stuff, yeah. like, yeah. yeah, Bill Cosby would wear the college. He would just wear he any college, it seemed yeah. like. But what, what <laughs> they, they did in the ABC, they really started stamping it. So when we came with tradition, the tradition was really, supposed to be a real high-end lifestyle brand for collegiate wear and understanding that we as people, we like quality stuff. We like to spend money and we like, we, we're not going to the game with flip-flop shorts and a t-shirt. We going totally dripped out. So with that said, I did tradition with some partners that I think it just, it went left and everything happens for a reason. You know, unfortunately, uh, you know, 2019, I went through some health issues. The business was going in a way. I backed away from it. 
And when I backed away from it, the pandemic hit. Yeah. My father passed away from, from COVID. And it just, it just set me in a dark place. And then here we go. Somebody who was a fly on the wall helping me with social media and really making his, making his, making his, his, his steps in the social media stepped up and said, hey, I want to do this. And I said, no, nah, I'm done. And from that, I lead it into him of yeah. coming up with a name, coming up with an energy, but it's deeper. And he says, he says a lot, purpose. And I'm like, to me, that means a lot, you know? So he yeah. took it from there and Legacy History Pride is, you know, I consult and, you know, I mean, what, what he I does wanted, is incredible. I wanted to ask you, you said 40 years in the game, what are some of the things that you learned about building a brand that you could share with the next generation? So one thing I always say is, you know, don't burn bridges. I've seen people burn bridges. I, I, I used to always think, oh, I need X amount of dollars. And, this, and let me tell you something. Over the years, relationships, I value relationships more than a wallet with money, full of money. Give me 10 of my relationships and tell me you don't have no money. I'll take that rather than give me $100,000 and no relationships. Relationships is everything. And then another thing is just networking. You know, um, one thing he, he, you know, one thing he did was really the word collaborating. I don't come from that. Cause they're, like I said, everybody was hush hush and not sharing ideas and not sharing manufacturing. And I'm like, first. I could yeah. go to a manufacturer and, and not until I went, went to China and I take, go to China and sip that green tea. I realized we, the first time I went over there, we were making jeans over there and they were making jeans for Sean John in the same factory. And he was making jeans for this other brand. I can't forget the name, but I was like, wait a minute, y'all doing production for everybody? But their production was theirs, ours was ours. And I was just like, oh, y'all winning. The factory was winning. So yeah. fast forward now, it's like I have relationships and I don't share it with anybody because I share it with people who I think take this industry and take what I'm doing serious. And people who just like 85, so I believe in the brand. And when I, you know, when I met Chad, he told me, and just, we sat and we broke bread and he yeah. told me his vision. And I don't know what it was, we connected, but to see where you guys are, see what you guys are doing and the tentacles of the octopus, I call it, of all, you know, you guys got a lot, a lot going on, but for me to focus on, and I come back and I always say, the fashion piece is being slept on. I, you're doing it, but I'm like, it could be so stronger. So that's why we've been linking with where, where you. Where you guys are right now, if I can lead you to something, run. Yeah. Just run. Because you know what? My relationship is secure now with the factory and it's secure with you guys. Right. And we're not competing with each other. Exactly. But it's, like I say, it's enough room out here for everybody to win. Right. We created our merch out of demand. Once yeah. we start doing live shows and we start seeing that people wanted to leave and take a piece of this shit with them. Yeah. They wanted to have something yeah. that they could wear and show solidarity and support and be a part of, you know, like in the beginning. So right. all of this shit came from demand. Yeah. yeah. Like it never was like, oh, we gonna start a clothing joint. It was just, nigga, we need something that these people, when we come out, they want to be a part of it. Like, hey, we want shirts, we want this, we want this on it. Yeah. But you guys are organic, because what I love is yeah. you're always in your gear. Yeah. You, or you can wear somebody else, but it's really organic and it's real. Bro, I've been wearing my shit so long, yeah, the other your, shit don't even feel right. Bro. Keyword in the sentence, <laughs> your. Yeah. You yeah. wearing your shit. And on the other shit and, just don't fit my body right no more. But the craziest thing is, is when you go somewhere, not expecting, you walk in this, I went to the grocery and I saw a guy with a South shirt on and I was like, Wow, and he had a gray yeah. beard like me, yeah. and I was like, oh, was okay. No, I, was just <laughs> <laughs> I was in the but airport, it, I walked me, past a nigga, The demographics like, nice you guys tapping into, it's like, that's a brand. Yeah. It's yeah. not associated with just everybody who watches this. It's a brand, and it's gonna tap in, and then the next thing is, are you giving them quality, and are you bringing them the next thing? You bringing them the next thing, and It's much know? deeper than just fashion, too. Yeah. I think um, what attracted me to the business so much was just building community. So, I mean, you was just saying, like, like what have I learned, like all the knowledge that he's taught me my whole life. And it's been less about like what he's told me, but more so just about watching him work and do the actual work. The crazy part is, nigga, that's literally your father. Yeah. So you know some shit that you don't even know you know yet. Mm. Like he put that shit in your DNA. Mm. It's crazy. I'm somebody's father, I'll be like, it's my son. <laughs> Take him to <laughs> trade shows with me when he was young yeah. because Nobody's home to watch him. Come on with me. Right. And he says it. He was the bobblehead in the car, in the back. But when I started seeing him connect with people, I, I was back about to up. Say, even at that age, yeah. I didn't know what networking was at yeah. 11 years old. Right. But I'm just a curious kid going in these spaces, 
developing relationships with people at 11 years old who I still remain in contact to this day. Right. He was a so, gold mine right. to take. That was, when you take a kid somewhere, oh, man. you here. Yeah. But once again, like I said, my father took me downtown to buy stuff. Right. So when I started going to shows, I seen it on another level. I seen guys who own companies, and nothing wrong with nepotism. They had their son in place or their daughter in place when they graduated college or whatever. They were like, this is yours. Right. And I was like, that's living inheritance. They ain't waiting until you die. They put them in place. Yeah. So they came in, and if they had a company, all of a sudden, they created another brand. And I was like, oh, you just put your son on. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I was like, we could do the same that's thing. That's what you're supposed yeah. to do. A unique yeah. thing about this, though, is that Pops never wanted me to really be a part of the business. He's always said, like, I want you to be bigger and better than anything I've ever been. Be better than me. That's, so, that's right. my thing. Be better. Um, so yeah, but so like when I really kind of expressed interest in being a part of tradition at the time and then eventually doing my own thing, really just asked for his blessing in that because I just know how much it means to him. Yeah. And just like letting him know like this is something that like I'm trying to take to a whole new level. Yeah, um, he said you're already so, doing it with the yeah. collab. So what, what made you introduce this strong brand, you know, with all these years of experience to all these new ventures and like you said, collaborations and things of that nature? I That's see, a big risk. Yeah, I, I see the brand as, as a way to just express uh, my story, the HBCU story, um, things that just have value and substance to me. And I don't want to box that in to just, to just gear, to just, uh, you know, fabrics and whatnot. I think there's so much, so many stories to share within um, the black story in itself that we, we, I don't want to limit it or put it into a box of just like, oh, it's just this product. So I, I've been a part of unique campaigns with Nike, uh, I've collaborated with the NBA, WNBA, yeah. um, just launched a partnership with Black Lives Matter. That's what's and we're giving out $500,000 sure in scholarships. Get the, no, get them, don't let them fuck the money up. No, nah, <laughs> they don't get it right. Just give it nah, out your nah, fucking nah. self. <laughs> give it out yourself. <laughs> don't. No, nah, we, we I've, I've met with them for the, the real past Black few Lives months. Matter. Yeah, real, real BLM. Black people. Black people. Them the ones black I'm worried about. <laughs> black people. <laughs> All right, I don't be like, hey, they already stole enough money, bro. Got us out here. Hey, if, crazy I, if I could zip. vouch, one thing I have to say is what, where they located at? What city they in? Uh, they're a little bit all over right now. See? See? Yeah. 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 Damn, yeah. 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 They, they all over, man. Like, <laughs> You stupid. But Lowe's, listen, <laughs> if I was to say, if I could vouch, he's very good at uh, vetting what your purpose. Why do you come to us for the, for the HPC? We have the license. We know the value of the license, but you come to us and you want to do something with the HPC community. What do you want to do? Why do you want to do it? And some of the other companies, yeah, we can link up and we can do something. And you always tell them, are oh, you giving back? You know, so that's the important part. We're going to keep the integrity of what we're doing. Yeah. But like you just said, you have to, that's real what you just said, because there's people on the outside saying BLM, but it's, it's, you have see, to peel see, back. You, 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 no, you, no, you, you peel back. back. It's you legit, it's back. legit. I wouldn't let them get involved with it, because at first I was like, yo, I heard all, you hear the stories. Right. I could probably read something about you, but until I talk about it. They lying. They, they say, exactly, they, they, they lie. They say I'm an avid Trump supporter. Right. That's what they say. Hey. I disagree with all the motherfuckers. Like, all right. Yeah. But hey, man, until you talk directly to people and shake their hand and look them in the eye. That's what I'm saying. I'm old school. All that, my young I'm dog. not going to text you a collaboration. I appreciate that. that. We going to, you know, that. You looking out. around, bro. They out here making people look real crazy. Look crazy. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but this is this is on up and up. And I'm, I'm proud of everything he's doing and, li and aligning himself, himself with, the, with the brand. But it's the Mr. Legacy and then there's LHP. Yeah. And Mr. Legacy is the part that I, I say you have to do. It's part of branding yourself because sometimes they come to him just for him and what he represents to the HBC community. He's yeah, he that got face. That knowledge. He's that face. And I'm like, one thing we talk about in the house is in, you know, in t integrity and respect. And, and let's bring you know, back yeah. them sock hats. You remember them? Yeah, I, and I know the person who started them. Yeah, let's fuck. Let's bring them back. <laughs> All right. You remember them shit? You want the little ties Hell and the stripes yeah. and the, yeah. you dating yourself right now. You I give a fuck. <laughs> you probably two years younger than me now. That's a fix. <laughs> oh no, I got you might have been in. Nah, nah, nah. We'll bring back ski goggles. Come on, man. <laughs> I'm mad that them big ass chain link uh, with the lock locks never took off. That shit was just too heavy for the average consumer. That's crazy. 